A few years ago, my mom and I got stuck in a classic conflict. Whenever we'd talk on the phone, she'd accuse me of not calling her enough, and I'd accuse her of being too critical. And one of us would hang up on the other. And round and round it went. Familiar situation to anyone else here? <laughs> this took up so much of my time and energy. And the funny thing is, I am the conflict resolution expert, which didn't help me at all because I was emotionally hijacked and furious. But when I calmed down, I remembered my beloved mentor, Dr. Mort Deutsch, father of conflict resolution, who made a very simple but profound discovery about conflict. It's self-perpetuating. I spent five whole years in graduate school studying just some of the factors that perpetuate this conflict loop. And what I discovered is that in our efforts to resolve conflict, we often make it worse. When you're stuck in recurring conflict, you develop conflict habits like avoiding or blaming other people, blaming yourself, or relentlessly seeking win-win solutions, even when other people refuse to cooperate. And your conflict habits interact with other people's conflict habits to form a pattern of interaction that keeps you stuck on the conflict loop. Now, I find all this fascinating, don't get me wrong, but I'm happy to say I've now spent the last 13 years working with leaders and writing a book all about how we can get ourselves off this conflict loop, and I finally have some answers to that question. You might be wondering, how? First of all, stop trying to resolve something that has shown itself to be unresolvable. <laughs> Instead, find your way off the loop altogether by breaking the pattern of the conflict loop. For most of us, just observing the situation tends to be pattern breaking. We're so used to trying to make the conflict go away, simply observing it breaks the pattern. Great way to observe a conflict is to map it out. When I mapped out the situation with my mom, I noticed it really involved many more people than just the two of us. I'm complaining to my husband. My dad is stuck in the middle. Mapping also gave me the gift of noticing that my mom really loved to talk on the phone. <laughs> when I was a kid, she'd spent hours talking with my grandmother and my aunt and now they're gone, and she wants to talk to me. Mapping gave me empathy for my mom, which gave me the motivation to restore the love between us. I just needed to figure out how. One lever for change comes from what I call our shadow values, those things we really care about in life that we're unwilling to admit we care about, that nonetheless drive our behavior. And when we don't admit to them, these shadow values wreak havoc on our relationships with others. When my mom said that I didn't call her enough, I felt accused of being too self-involved. And some part of me felt terrified that it was true. I secretly knew that I valued independence. When I was a kid, I have great memories of sitting alone at a little kid-sized desk, doodling and drawing pictures by myself for hours. But then, the cultural messages I got as I grew older, be nice, help others, take care of their feelings, pushed that value of independence right into the shadow. We say we're driven, by what I call our ideal values. Those things we're proud really matter to us. I said I loved my mom, 
But because I pushed my value of independence away, it oozed out in ways I did not intend. So I'd be walking down the street getting ready to come back and sit down at my desk to work on a client project, and the phone would ring. And all I could think was, oh God, she's going to want to talk for half an hour. <laughs> and I wouldn't pick up the phone. But once I acknowledged that I did care about independence and that it could exist alongside my ideal value of love, relationship, family, I realized I could both be loving towards my mom and set appropriate boundaries around my time. Now, this may seem very simple, and some of you may do this without even thinking about it. But it was powerful because it was different from what I had done before. It was pattern breaking. But in the kinds of conflicts we're talking about, your emotions can overpower your ability to break any patterns at all. You might be breaking other stuff, but... When that happens, after the dust settles, ask yourself, what are my emotions trying to tell me? What message are they trying to send me? Anger typically says, that's not fair. And fear says, danger ahead. And sadness says, a loss has occurred. Then ask, what constructive pattern-breaking action you can take? So if you normally yell at other people when you feel angry, what could you do instead? Or if you typically freeze when you feel scared, what else could you do? Or if you normally dive right back into life when you feel sad, how else could you respond? I'd been so agitated, I didn't want to sit quietly with my feelings. <laughs> but once I did, I noticed two things, anger, and sadness. Anger said all the usual stuff like, this is not fair, who does she think she is? And sadness was much harder to notice, covered up by all that anger. But when I listened carefully, sadness said, I'm devastated. Don't push your mom away. Be bigger than this. What pattern-breaking action could I take? I had to remember that the only reason my mom was ever calling me was because she loves me. A student of mine helped me create this logo, which shows up whenever my mom calls my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Says, mom loves you. It reminds me to pick up the phone when she calls, and if I can't, to text her back and let her know when I can. I also decided I'd call her more frequently at times that work for me. <laughs> Since then, the blow-ups have subsided. My mom and I found our way off the conflict loop. And the older we both get, the happier I am for it. Mapping out the conflict, honoring your shadow values, and listening to your emotions are three practices that will help you break the conflict pattern. Don't wait for anyone else to change or agree with you. You can free yourself without anyone's cooperation. And when you do, there's a moment you'll suddenly feel free. When I broke free from the conflict loop with my mom, I felt like I got my life back. And I know this is possible for you too. When conflict resolution fails, free yourself instead. Do something different, something pattern-breaking. Thank you.